Hey guys, Rill here with another video, finally. I know this one's not a big deal one, but I know it's been a really long time, so finally here's one. So I see like around like on YouTube, Discord, everything, people saying like, hey, I made a like a rewind video for my voice acting and I put like clips from like my different projects and stuff. I can't really do that because a lot of my projects, like I can't just copy and paste it into a video, like probably get in trouble for it. So I'm not going to do that. So instead I'll mention some projects I was in and then I'm gonna like, you know, like talk about it a little bit, very little, but I would have just like re-recorded some clips or something or like just recorded something, but I have a cold. It's like kind of sort of really noticeable. So, um, I figured let's go on to plan B, which is a video <laughs> of reflection for 2017. Excuse me. I had to cough. All right. All right. I stifled the cough, but whatever. All right. So a lot of these things are pointless little things, but they still mean like something to be. So like without further ado, let's get going. Also, like none of this stuff is in any particular order. They're just like literally things I thought of off the top of my head. But first, let's talk about the voice acting and YouTube kind of stuff. Also, um, I am, I have notes in front of me. So, like, if you see me looking, like, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at my notes because I would totally forget what I was going to say. Actually, I already tried to record this, like, once already, and I just trashed it because I kept looking at the notes too much. Anyway, <laughs> let me try not to look at the notes, but we'll see, right? You know, we never know. So, let's see. So, I know I keep saying, I'm going to make a video, I'm going to make a video, and, like, maybe I make, like, one, like, in a few months. But for 2018, I'm going to really try really, really hard to get a video out every two weeks. I know that's like nothing compared to like other creators and stuff like that. But with my work schedule, I work a full time job. It's kind of really hard. And also like keeping track of everything else. My cousin and I are working on our book series. Like there's tons of things I, I'm working on. So like I literally don't have enough time in a day to make videos more frequently than that but hopefully that's fine i mean still you'll see other things i'm in and stuff like on other channels all the time because people are always posting stuff so let's talk about some projects in 2017 so one of the ones that i was pretty proud of is the tail concerto fan animation um it was like a waffle skit and I played Alicia and Flair. And the reason I was particularly proud of this one, not only the animation is, like, really good looking, like, professional, but also just how many views it got, like, right away. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of the person who I would look at the views and be like, hey, look at that. They got a lot of views. Or I got a lot of views on that video. You know, stuff like that. Generally, stuff on my channel, like, not so much. But I'll look at other projects, you know. Because, you know. <laughs> So, let's see the next one. Oh, so Suna Mod's Project Echo S. I'm working on that. I play Tifa and Jesse. Some stuff has been out already. They have live streams and stuff like that. Um, they're always looking for help, whether it be like as a voice actor, like as an NPC, or helping with making models or programming kind of stuff. I really don't know what I'm talking about because I don't program things at all. Um, but if you're interested in helping and you like Final Fantasy, which this is a Final Fantasy VII mod, then, you know, feel free to message me. I'm going to link my Discord and my email down at the bottom of the description. So, yeah, we'll see about that. Maybe you guys could help us. So, let's see. I was also in a cartoon hookups animation of all things. I was very fortunate that I didn't have to record anything too strange, um, but I played Videl in Winky Dink Media's cartoon hookups episode, so that was that was a fun one. Uh, let's see, I was also Usagi in a Sailor Moon parody thing, is literally the name of it, I'm not just calling it a thing, it's called a Sailor Moon parody thing, which I feel is like a really underrated abridged series. I'm not really a fan of abridged series. Like I don't really usually like those kind of jokes and stuff. I, you know, like I'd rather watch like an original thing or a, um, like a fan dub. I, I don't even know. But anyway, 
usually I'm not too big on abridged. But I actually, like, kind of really like his jokes and stuff. He references the 90s a lot because Sailor Moon took place, like, you know, like, obviously their fashion and everything like that is from the 90s. And I just realized that I'm missing the cord to the other end of this hoodie. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, we're good. <laughs> it's extremely cold in my house, so that's why I'm wearing a hoodie. Okay, so uh, back to a Sailor Moon parody thing. It's, um... Uh, lots of 90s references and stuff like that and so I will have the link to that in the description below and I think there's like two more yeah 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 Let's see looking at my notes again so probably the biggest project that I've worked on this year was recording for a Minecraft map for the marketplace uh, this one in particular was created by Blockception and they are like amazing builders <laughs> their their map i will link it down below also it is called annie right wait i'm sorry annie the rise of lindinium i always get that title wrong for some odd reason but i play the the main uh character the ai annie so yeah you should check that out that one was really fun um and Ending the year of 2017 with voice acting, how appropriately was it that the last thing I was in, as of far as me searching on YouTube or anything like that, um, was a super extremely violent animation called The End of Team Rocket by Anime Tunes. So that one, I was Jesse in it. And like, I'm always happy to voice Jesse in anything because I like really love that character. But I mean, I didn't really realize how violent it was, but it was fine anyways. Like, you know, I, I was pretty happy with how it came out. Um, and I'm happy to announce that I will be in another bridge series. I know I said I don't really like a bridge series, but hey, <laughs> here we go. I'm actually in quite a few coming up. I'll have to mention them another time, but, uh, I'm going to be voicing Jesse in a Pokemon abridged series sometime in the future. It's undetermined when, but my boyfriend is going to be voicing James, so that's going to be interesting for me and him. But yeah, we can't wait to start recording for that. So I think those were like the highlights of the voice acting stuff. There's been, there's tons of other things, but those are just like the main points that I wanted to go across. And holy cow, this video is long already. I'm sorry, but there is more to it. So this past year, I finally got a new microphone. Finally, after like almost 10 years, I finally have one. Um, so I'm super happy about that. But now on to the main point of this video, which is the things I learned in 2017. A lot of them are not going to be like um, super like important things, but... So, let's see. So, the first thing I learned was to face your fears. And so I'm, like, widely known as a chicken. Like, when it comes to trying anything remotely scary. Like, roller coasters? Mm -mm, no thanks. Driving on the highway? I'd rather not. Even a simple thing as driving during a small snow squall is, like, terrifying for me. So I can think of two instances this year, this past year, I mean, that really stuck out as like me um uh facing my fears i couldn't think of the word so let's see so one was the tree climbing in the poconos my cousin and i went to go on this obstacle course in the trees so the thing is that it was um it doesn't sound that bad right tree course hey it doesn't sound that bad but no 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 you're dangling from these cables like high up like 30 feet in the air and you're thinking while you're up there, like, okay, the only thing keeping me from falling to my death is these trees. And if these trees decide to just snap, yeah, you're done for. So those are the thoughts that go through your mind when you're up there, especially when you're afraid. So I was even, like, freaked out at the first part. The first zip line, like, freaked me out, like, to the point where I was about to quit. That one was only, like, 12 feet in the air. So we finished that course and went on to the next level, which is, like, 30 feet in the air. So this course is like crazy. It has like, like a part where you jump onto a skateboard, like dangling from these cables. 
but the second you jump on that skateboard, it starts moving. So you have to, like, just, like, go with it, like, no matter what. And, yes, if you let go, you're just going to dangle. It'll just dangle and you'll go across. But me, I just can't let go. Like, I, it's just not going to happen. I'm not like Elsa. I can't just let it go. But, <laughs> so, I, I spent, like, maybe, like, a good five minutes on that skateboard, or near that skateboard, trying to figure out, am I going on this thing or not? Finally, I did. And I was like, okay, that was awesome and, like, terrifying. And it was not a long ride at all. It was, like, like a couple feet. Maybe, like, five feet. I don't know. I'm really bad with measurements. But, like, maybe five to ten feet, like, across. Really high up, but across. And, you know, I screamed my whole way. Ah! You know, so then there's not much left. There's a part where you have to swing across these logs. It's not that bad. You know, like, it's still kind of scary. Then you get to this part that I like to be call. I like to call it, like, the telephone poles of terror. Because that's what it was. It was, like... <coughs> It was like these poles, and they were about like a little bit taller than me, and they were dangling from these, these cables. And they were separated by like three to four feet, and they swing like you swing on them, like you go like, whoosh, and you have like footholds, like where you put your feet on the bottom. So you're holding on, and the whole idea, you're supposed to hold on with one arm, and then you're supposed to swing and like grab onto the other, wrap your leg around that get onto that foothold and jump to the other doesn't sound too bad right well the problem is that when you're just terrified of what's going on because you don't really like heights that much even though like you will go on things but it still freaks you out and at this point you you had already been on another obstacle your your muscle strength is pretty much depleting and you're getting freaked out because you're thinking, how am I ever going to get through this? You start to panic. So, like, my legs start shaking, I start crying, and, like, I'm just clutching to this thing, like, for dear life. And my cousin tells me to sit on it. And so I sit on it. And then the workers come, and they're like, try to stand up. And I'm like, I can't, I can't, you know. <laughs> So I'm on this thing crying, and there's, like, these little kids behind me going, like, she's taking forever. But then there's this one little cute kid who's like, you could do it! Like, which was, like, adorable. He was, like, the youngest one. The older ones were just like, oh my god, will you just get her off this course already? This is terrible. So, eventually I had to be rescued. They repelled me down very slowly. It was fine. But that does not mean I'm done with that course. I will be back. I will go back on that course. I just have to gain some muscle strength. I need to be stronger. And then I will do that course and I will get through the entire thing. And then I'll get stronger. And then I'll go on to the next one above it. Because there is one above it still. That one is insane. Like, like that one, you climb this, like, tiny narrow little ladder that, like, I don't even understand how it stays. And you climb it and then you go and it's, I, I was looking at it it was crazy. So, that was the tree course, and that was, I faced my fears. I mean, yes, I failed at the end, but I still, I still had a lot of fun, even though I was terrified, and if I had let my, you know, like, original fears just consume me and stop me from even doing that zip line, I probably would have never gotten to that point. I would have just given up. I would have hopped off right at that zip line and been like, I'm done, <laughs> but no. So... The second thing was less more me doing something than going on something. This was a roller coaster. <laughs> I know I said roller coasters don't like them. Well, I don't like them if they have drops. I hate the feeling of a drop. I just can't stand that. It's just ugh, no. So what happened was there was this roller coaster, indoor roller coaster at Hershey Park, and uh, so this roller coaster. When I looked at it in a video on YouTube, because I researched it like the night before, I was like, I will check and see. That this ride is not as scary as, like, I don't know, some other ride. You know, like, the, it's not going to have this big drop. So I watched the video, and the video doesn't seem that bad. It seems like it goes up and up and up, and then it, like, balances out. And then it goes, like, curvy drop. Like, like ever so slightly. Like, Thunder Mountain Railroad, basically. Which I'm like, oh, this is fine. This is fine. So I go on it. It was nothing like that. It went up and up and up, and I was going, when I'm going up, I'm already screaming, because I hate going up in roller coasters, because I know what's happening after that. It's going up and up, and it goes straight, 
And I had my eyes open, and I realized that this thing's got a drop. <laughs> Not just like a little curvy drop, but like a ah! drop. <laughs> it had basically the height of the roller coaster is 50 feet, so I'd say that's like a almost 50 foot drop. So it does on one drop. And then it, you think, oh, okay, that, that that's the worst part, right? No, then it goes back up again, and it goes backwards about the same height. So now you're going down that same drop backwards. Well, a different drop, but a similar drop backwards. So, like, I'm just, like, screaming my head off. I'm doing one of those, like, laugh-cry screams. Like, you don't know if you're laughing, you don't know if you're crying, you don't know if you're screaming. Like, it's just, like, hysterical. And my brother's just sitting next to me, like, chuckling. And, uh, so... The ride was only, like, less than two minutes, but to me, it felt like 10 or 20. It was, like, ongoing. I was just like, no, let me off this thing. And then after the ride, my dad asked me, hey, you want to go on it again? And I was like, no. But, hey, I went on it once, so probably next time I would go on it again because I know that I survived it. And that's the point there, that you survived it, so you can do it. You will do it again. <laughs> Another one that I, another lesson I learned, I guess you could call it, was stand up against someone. Even if you feel like you're being treated unfairly, you're like, I mean, not even if, if you feel that you're being treated unfairly or like not respected. So like, I mean, really, what's the worst that can happen? They don't like you. Um, they start talking about you. Like they give you dirty looks. Like another thing I learned from that is that not everyone's going to like you. Like, and it's fine. Like, you can't control that. Like, everyone's got different personalities. Everyone's, like, you know, it could be that they just don't like your personality type. They're quiet. You're loud. Whatever. Um, or maybe it's, like, a jealousy thing. Or the stars aren't even aligned correctly. Who knows? Whatever it is, you can't make everyone like you. And you can't make everyone... <coughs> Excuse me. You can't make everyone in your life, your friend, but you can still respect them and be expected to get respect in return. Um, so that was that one. I won't say where or how I learned that lesson, but I learned it and it was difficult for me because I try to make everyone like me. And if someone doesn't like me, I don't understand why. And I feel like it's my fault and I am the reason, but that's not always true. So another thing I learned, don't procrastinate. This is a more recent thing for me because I usually don't do this. I used to like, I would get a deadline for something. I would record like the week it was assigned. Like, you know, say if someone's like, hey, I want these lines done in like a month. I'll have it done in like two days. But recently I fell into like this pattern of like procrastination like, and I think what happened was it came from my full-time job because, like, you're working all day, you get home, you don't really want to, like, work on something. You just want to chill, play video games, or, or do something else. You don't want to be super loud. And maybe even your, your voice is just, like, tired for the day. You know, like, maybe you've been talking and singing and everything all day. Um, so, you know, you don't feel like working on it, right? But then you get sick or something happens, like bad or, or maybe not super bad, but, but bad enough that you can't record. Or maybe people are just being loud or there's trucks outside. There's so many different reasons. But until, so then you push it back and back and back. Not that far back, but, but back enough that you're like, uh-oh, like this deadline's coming up. And then you finally look at the script and realize you could have gotten this done in like five minutes because this is the super simplest thing ever, but you just never looked at it ahead of time. You were just like, ah, I'll get to it. It's not the, it's not the main one I'm working on right now. I'll, I'll get to it eventually, but you should have just done it originally. And then you feel like really stupid and pretty much really unprofessional. And then you like apologize to the director and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, here's the lines. Like, is there anything else you need? Blah, 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 blah. But then they're usually pretty cool about it. And I mean, they never gave you like an actual deadline anyway. Um, it's more like, when can you do this? But 
generally I have dealt with really nice people who are just happy to get those lines in. But that won't always be the case. Um, you know, like, if it's a paid thing, you know, you, like, you're gonna have to, you know, not procrastinate. I mean, when it comes to paid thing, like, commission-based things, I get them done, like, right away. But, you know, like I said. So, but I want to say in 2018, I am so not doing that. I am getting my lines done, like, as soon as possible, even if it means just taking a whole entire day, like, one of my days off, just recording the entire day, because that's what I used to do for a really long time, but then I got kind of, like, burnt out, like, just too tired and stuff, just wanted to, like, do something else, but I will do that. And I apologize for my cold-sounding voice. I know it's really annoying. I can't help it, though. All right, so this next one is a pretty positive one. I actually really like this lesson. You may be more respected than you feel. So this one comes from my college. So I was contacted by a past professor who told me I was selected as one of the exceptional majors from the college, from the school. And they wanted some like information of what I'm doing now, what's my career, how I'm using my degree in my current work, this and that. And you know what? That that made me feel pretty awesome. Like, wow, someone actually appreciated what I did, like, in college? Like, huh? Like, because I never really thought of myself as, like, a good, like, student. I mean, yes, I was a good student. I got everything done. I did everything. I didn't, like, I didn't procrastinate. <laughs> but, I mean, I never really thought, like, hey, I should be recognized as something so it just made me really feel special and I must I must have made some kind of impact on someone for them to be like you out of all of them you I don't know maybe it was my media project because I know they were blown away by that I made a um this was a few years ago but I made a token media project so I was in a token mythology class so I wrote a song in Sindarin I, first of all, I translated it into Sindarin, then I wrote the song myself. It didn't have any music, but then we filmed it on location in costume, like at a park, a local park, and edited it. It had like lyrics and everything. I think it, yeah, it had lyrics and everything. And my teacher was just like blown away. He was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you dressed up. I can't believe you did this and that. And I was just like, yeah, because that professor, like basically he's like, uh, one of those, like, really, really into Tolkien professors. Like, he could probably speak Sindarin. So I was really nervous about making it, but I did. And that's beside the point. But one final thing I learned, because this video is getting long and I apologize, is try something new. So, uh, a few months ago, like, in, like, September, my mom randomly asked me, hey, you want to take line dancing lessons with me and I gave her a look like you kidding me like what are you talking about but we had local line dancing lessons and my mom and I went to it at first we were thinking okay we're probably not gonna like this this is gonna be like one of those like we're just gonna do it once it'll be out but we actually wound up really liking it and to the point where we're gonna start going to the dances too like like the weekly dances so in 2018, we'll be doing that. So, if you're looking for a... Whoops, I hit my mic. If you're looking for a dance that's not too difficult to learn, like, you know, like, you're looking to get into something, line dancing is really fun. It's just got a lot of steps, but hey, every dance does. And, like, I mean, it was really fun because I hadn't danced in anything really recently, especially since uh sort of new makeup went on hiatus so like which i really hope to bring that back too i've been trying to get everyone to get back for that but that's like a whole other thing so i think that's everything that i can think of off the top of my head that i learned in 2017 I hope you enjoyed this video. I once again apologize for my cold sounding voice. I know it's it's terrible. I can hear it in myself. And I hope everyone has a great 2018. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.